All right, so it's 10.02, um, and it looks like we've kind of leveled off in terms of people joining. Uh, maybe we'll kind of slow roll our introductions here and uh, get started with the meeting. So uh, thank you all for uh, joining us uh, today. Um, my name is Gil Cerise, Program Manager in Transportation Planning Division here at Puget Sound Regional Council. I'm uh, going to start us down uh, on the um, let's see, um, meeting procedures to kind of share a little bit more. Uh, um, you're, if you're here today, uh, you're uh, you, uh, for the Central Puget Sound's uh, TDM and CTR planning in the PSRC region, you're in the right place. Um, I, uh, I'm i going to go over this kind of list here, but just to kind of give you a heads up, uh, we will be conducting a brief poll for introductions. Um, First portion of the meeting is going to be uh, with a PSOC sharing information about uh, 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 TDM and CTR planning in our region uh, with a focus on preparing for the local CTR plans that you all are working on uh, to meet state requirements around that, as well as to talk a little bit more about how we are preparing to update our regional transportation plan that encompasses uh, CTR and TDM planning and, uh, more broadly. Um, we're setting up this first part of the meeting to kind of be a really, uh, we're recording it for people who can't make it today and we're gonna post it. Uh, so the first meeting, part of the meeting, uh, agenda items uh, two and three, where we're talking about PSO CTM planning work and the regional CTR plans. And then when Aaron takes over to talk about PSRC's review and processing of local CTR plans, that will be recorded and be posted on our website afterwards. For that reason, we're asking you, if you want to interact with us to please just post your questions in the question and answer uh, section, and we'll be monitoring that. And, and then we have a question and answer section after a, a break that we'll be taking if people feel that's necessary. Uh, we can do a, a brief break and then we'll uh, be responding to the questions that were uh, submitted for the first part of the meeting. And, um, and then we will also uh, be asking, people can ask questions live as well. Uh, so in the meantime, we're encouraging you, if you want to, to turn on your camera and join us, uh, but keep yourself muted for the first part of the meeting. And then um, and then after that, in the second part of the meeting, you can certainly turn on your uh, audio if you wanna speak uh, and that kind of a thing. Um, at this point, I'm going to um, turn things over to Aaron to conduct a brief poll to kind of give us a sense of who all's here joining us today. Uh, Aaron, do you wanna introduce yourself and then uh, conduct the poll? Yeah, thanks, Gil. Um, hi, everyone. As Gil mentioned, my name is Erin Hogan. I'm an associate planner supporting our TDM work. Um, and I think two orders of business, um, maybe before Alexa, before you launch the poll, um, just in case folks can't find it, um, there should be a Q&A button at the bottom of your um, Zoom toolbar, but if there isn't, click on that more button. Um, and also, if you want to test to see if it works, feel free to just send a Q&A that says test and we'll dismiss those. So um, not mandatory, but if you, if you want to just experiment with it, if you haven't before, feel free to do that. Um, and now I think we're ready for the Zoom poll. Alexa, could you launch the first poll question? Great, thank you. Um, so we're just asking, how would you categorize the organization you're representing today? City, county, transit agency, TMA, state agency, um, or other? And then the second question is, is your jurisdiction CTR affected? Um, if you're not sure, or if that uh, doesn't apply to you, those are options in addition to yes and no. So I'll be quiet for a few moments um, while folks finish taking the poll. And people can see this on the screen, right, Erin? Um, we were talking before the meeting. We've all got our new Zoom, so. <laughs> um, um, they may not see the results until I end the poll, but they, oh, okay. they should see. see the questions. See. Um, okay, it looks like um, everyone here so far has responded. Um, so, Alexa, sorry, I hope it's okay. I ended the poll um, and I can click share results. Um, Gil, is that what you, I think that's what you were asking for. That's fine. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, so it looks like we have a lot of representatives from cities and counties, um, one from transit agency, uh, three from state agencies and three other, um, and 14 of our 17 attendees are CTR affected. So lots of content um, for all of you today. Okay. Um, and I think I took that down correctly. Um, so I think we're ready to move on, Gil. Oh, did you do the uh, CTR affected once? Who's CTR affected? 
Yeah, I was just saying, uh, I think 14 of the 17 oh, okay. books here are, okay, great. are affected. Thank you. And then I guess my one amendment to what you said, uh, Aaron, thank you for sharing where, where people can do Q&A. I think on my on my bar, the more bar is at the top. So I think it depends upon where you have it. Just look for that more bar. And that's where the question and answer um, would be. So now I think we're ready to launch into our uh, presentation here on um, on TDM and CTR planning in the Central Puget Sound region. And um, let's see here, let's get my having a little bit of a lag in my presentation here. So, all right. So just starting off uh, with uh, who we are at Puget Sound Regional Council, just in case there's any newer folks uh, here, we are a metropolitan planning organization and meet the functions uh, for regional transportation planning organization at the state level. Um, we have four counties, King, Kitsap, Pearson, and Homish counties with 82 cities and towns. Uh, we're very uh, large, diverse region with uh, uh, very the most urban areas within our state, as well as uh, lots of uh, uh, rural areas as well, uh, and everything in between. Uh, we're a membership-based organization uh, composed of cities, counties, ports, and transit agencies, uh, and state agencies and tribal governments, and they all come together as a, a, a governing body. We have an executive board that uh, makes our final decisions and brings together a general assembly that composed of all our membership once a year to approve, uh, you know, major plans and, and updates and things like that. Um, well, and then we also have uh, this, uh, what are our planning functions? We, we are a, a long range planning agency. We have a, a growth, man we address growth management uh, act with uh, some of the um, uh, development of our regional growth strategy, vision 2050. We're an economic uh, development district with economic development uh, plans. And then also a transportation planning organization. Uh, we have our regional transportation plan that meets federal and state requirements. It uh, goes out to a long range 20 uh, year forecast I'll be talking about shortly. And that that plan actually allows uh, funding to flow to our region, which we do uh, manage the uh, federal uh, highways and federal transit administration funding within our region uh, as part of our functions. Uh, now I'm transitioning to a little bit about our regional transportation plan. Uh, we have an illustration here of our current plan, uh, which was adopted in May of 2022. Uh, this a lot of what we're showing here on the on the slide is around the uh, the main federal requirements. We have to have at least a 20 year planning horizon, which works out really well because our vision 2050 goes well beyond 20 years, um, and and we always try to keep it that way. Uh, we update the plan every four years. It's a relatively frequent uh, uh, plan update cycle among uh, other MPOs. Uh, some of them are at five-year cycles, and we, because of a um, because of a uh, error uh, quality aspects, uh, we're required to do it on a four-year cycle. Uh, with our next plan update uh, happening on May of 2026, um, we include an integrated multimodal transportation system. It includes all the different modes and programs, including transportation demand management. Um, the reasonable financial strategy is required to fund investments that are within the plan. Uh, that includes not just current law revenues, but also uh, revenues that are uh, reasonably anticipated to occur within that 20 year planning horizon. And so you'll see in our plan, uh, I'll, I'll talk more about that, about like how we include those uh, uh, reasonably anticipated funds as well. And then also the latest available estimates for growth, travel, and economic activity. I think a key highlight here with uh, everyone in our TDM community really loves our regional household travel survey, which we use to really uh, dig into people's ongoing and changing travel behaviors and, and, and the mobility needs that they have. Uh, we use that survey that happens every two years to, um, to ground truth our models and help us uh, do the, the best modeling we can uh, for our long range transportation plan. We also include performance measures and targets, uh, a wide variety of them. Uh, there's federal, both federally mandated uh, performance measures and targets, but uh, we also go well above and beyond that. And we have an RTP dashboard that uh, shares uh, some key metrics that we uh, develop out of our regional transportation plan. And then there's a, a list of federal planning factors that are addressed within the, the plan as well. This is our slide that shows kind of the in, in, integrated uh, or iterative planning process on the left-hand side. And uh, before I go into that uh, that graphic there on the right hand side, we show kind of where we fit within the uh, planning context. At the large uh, outer part of that circle is the state uh, planning context, which for us uh, most of that is within the Growth Management Act and the development of the regional uh, growth strategy. It includes um, uh, land use, transportation, a very uh, multimodal, comprehensive uh, planning as 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 a um, 
all the local jurisdictions within our region are developing comprehensive plan updates that are due at the end of this year. And so that's at the state level. Included in that is also the CTR plan, the commute trip reduction plan we'll be talking about later. And that again, kind of provides that broader context at the statewide level. Then we fall into that middle circle there with Vision 2050, our regional um, growth strategy that implements the, uh, the growth targets coming out of the Growth Management Act. Uh, regional transportation plan uh, is an implementation arm of Vision 2050 and also addresses other uh, federal and state requirements, including the CTR plan. And then we have at the, at the middle there, uh, local comprehensive planning, transit agency plans, and transportation improvement programs. So uh, these are intended to influence one another. Uh, both uh, uh, we provide guidance at the regional level that influences the local comprehensive plans. But I'll kind of talk through on the left-hand side here our our Vision 2050 implementation, as uh, you'll see that Vision was adopted in 2020. Uh, they developed out of Vision 2050, uh, that green bar shows local activities. Uh, the um, local jurisdictions were working on countywide planning policies and local growth targets, and we're starting to develop local conference of plans by the time we adopted our RTP, our Regional Transportation Plan in 2022. So that uh, one of the key factors you'll be hearing about in our RTP was it was designed to kind of help influence and inform local conference of plan needs. Uh, we did a lot of work within our RTP about um, uh, what kind of needs are out there uh, with the additional uh, 10 years of growth horizon, uh, the planning horizon that we have. Uh, how do we, what kind of new needs are out there and trying to inform local comprehensive planning. That is supposed to be completed in 2024. And as you'll see, we are uh, in, here in 2024 launching our next RTP uh, process. And we're expecting to be able to be informed by those local comprehensive plan updates. As you've looked at your local jurisdictions and what your mobility needs are, what, what did you find in that as you allocated that new growth, as you uh, went from the countywide planning policies to the, the detailed local um, planning targets? And then uh, how, how can we uh, incorporate that into our, uh, our updated regional transportation plan? Our planning is really uh, very well informed by public engagement. We uh, do, uh, we have kind of sharing here a, a graphic from our uh, last regional transportation planning process. And we uh, use a lot of different elements of this. So we really did a lot around online engagement platforms and uh, social media and virtual outreach meetings. That was, we really upped our game in that, particularly because of the pandemic. We also use surveys, uh, personal interviews. We have very broad public outreach. And then we also have as part of our public participation plan, really detailed um, uh, targeted outreach, uh, such as to uh, people with uh, accessibility and mobility needs, people who are hard to reach through normal uh, public engagement processes, really kind of addressing a lot of the equity elements that are called for in their uh, CTR planning that the state asks us for, but also meeting other needs and development of our regional equity strategy. The objectives of our RTP uh, really builds on uh, Vision 2050, and we're uh, as uh, everything we do with respect to the RTP and, and its implementation of Vision 2050, uh, really uh, kind of growing out of that. Uh, you see a couple of main objectives coming out of that re current regional transportation plan are to make progress on existing challenges, address current and future needs of the transportation system. And that is, uh, as I was mentioning earlier, really providing better data and analysis to support local planning, local investments, uh, and, and kind of work around your 2024 conference of plans. And we're hoping that's also helpful to development of your local CTR plans. Uh, planning for long-term system investments to accommodate future growth. Again, kind of looking out, improving existing system needs and also thinking big picture and long-term. Uh, one of the things we talk about with, uh, you know, we list out here aviation rail and ferries. And when we talk about those modes, particularly with rail and ferries, is kind of different kind of mode shifts and things like that that are called for in our Vision 2050. And how do, uh, it, we have plans from our transit systems on, on rail and ferries and, and bus, but what is the next need out there beyond what has been planned by those agencies? And we're trying to identify that within our, um, within our planning framework. Uh, this is the uh, board adopted uh, uh, focus areas. Uh, we had uh, six key policy focus areas for the current regional transportation plan uh, with, uh, I think, kind of related to TDM, uh, access to transit is a really key part of that. We're trying to uh, uh, improve mode shift and as we grow our, our, our region and particularly around regional growth centers, high capacity transit uh, growth centers. That's the, that's the basis of our Vision 2050 growth strategy. And then we're extending out the the transit system and, and supporting elements that are uh, services and elements that uh, support that transit system. Uh, how do we get people better access to transit, particularly in areas that were uh, already developed to date 
is a more auto-oriented area. So we're expecting transformation of those areas to be more transit-oriented. And we're also then expecting uh, a, quite a bit of mode shift to walk, bike, and roll and uh, transit access. Uh, similarly, you'll see other, other elements here. Safety, equity, and climate is really a basis of almost everything we do. Addressing ongoing local agency needs and forward thinking and future investments. I kind of already mentioned those things in earlier um, uh, discussion of slides. And then uh, we have our graphic here shown at the right. I'd say that TDM, although it's not listed out specifically, it's part of that operational element of this. It's a programmatic element of our plan that we call out in a specific section there. But uh, just kind of making sure this is, it's a very comprehensive plan that covers lot, all the different modes and programs. Uh, this is talking about the investments in our multimodal system, which is, again, a requirement I started off with on the RTP. And you can see kind of an illustration here about, uh, about how this relates. We have over $300 billion of investment over the next 28 years uh, from our 2022 adoption. Uh, more than half of this, almost 60%, is uh, dedicated to maintaining, preserving an operation of the transportation system. And particularly when we're talking about a transit-focused growth strategy, operation and maintenance of that transit system that's being expanded is really a key and important. Uh, we all, the plan also invests in strategic system improvements, uh, uh, of which 70% is devoted to local and regional transit, again, kind of reflecting that transit-focused growth strategy. And we have here a listing of, of the different kinds of uh, uh, key investments that are within our current plan, all of which are going to need uh, transportation demand management support to kind of encourage people to make uh, modal shifts and, and, and move to those types of uh, uh, mobility um, services. In terms of paying for the plan, uh, uh, current law revenue covers the vast majority of the plan, 86% of that. Uh, that includes um, fuel tax, sales tax, property tax, things that are shown there. The remaining uh, portion, 14%, uh, is covered by new revenue sources. And this is where really a key to demand management is why I think of our plan as a very kind of a broadly uh, uh, large uh, transportation demand management uh, plan, we include user fees such as tolls and uh, road usage charge. And so we do include that additional uh, transit and ferry uh, funding sources, new local sources are being considered, but really the user fee uh, element of our plan is both an, a key part of uh, being able to kind of fund the plan in the future, but also a key part to um, the mode shift that we see in, in the modeling in our plan. Uh, I'll also say as we continue to plan and continue to advance our planning, uh, as we approach those dates when we were assuming more and more user fees, and if that doesn't happen, then we have to reass uh, reassess our plan and kind of look at that in a, in a different light. So that might be part of what we're looking at in this new plan update here. This 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 uh, this slide covers a bit of the performance uh, of uh, of our plan, and so just kind of sharing a, a few excerpts here. Uh, we have expanded data collection and inventories to make sure we have the best information that we can. Um, we cover a lot of different things shown here, including a TDM program inventory, which we'll be kind of covering uh, and sharing a little bit of our progress on that in a few slides, and a new transportation system visualization tool, which is intended to kind of help with uh, local jurisdictions identifying uh, mobility needs in their conference and plans. And then we include extensive outreach and engagement throughout our planning process as already mentioned. Here are a few key outcomes that I think are kind of rel related and relevant to uh, TDM, uh, where by 2050, we have almost 60% of households living within a half mile of high capacity transit system. And that's both a, a reflection of where the growth is planned to go based upon our land use planning, as well as uh, the expansion of our uh, high capacity transit system and our supporting uh, transit services. By 2050, the average person will walk or bike 21% more than today. Again, that's a reflection of the growth of those regional growth centers, those high capacity transit centers, where people will be able to walk, bike, and roll more and use transit as a way to get from place to place beyond their walk, bike, shed. Uh, so again, TDM, very important to making sure these mode shifts occur with the outcomes that we anticipate in our plan. In terms of what's ahead for TDM in the plan, this is an area where I'm going to highlight in our current regional transportation plan, pages 93 to 98, is where we really do highlight our TDM work. And so within that, uh, we do talk a lot about uh, the, the program in the inventory that we did in 2019, 2020, I think is the time frame there. Uh, what are the, some of the findings we found there? I think over 100 of, uh, we found over 100 um, um, 
programs that were TDM programs for the 2015 to 2020 timeframe. And the vast majority of those were not CTR plans. They were going above and beyond CTR. Uh, the minority of the programs were CTR programs. So we showed a really robust uh, amount of TDM planning within our region uh, and, and going well beyond kind of the state requirements around the CTR planning. We also show, uh, you know, measuring program. Uh, uh, and we also show kind of the um, context of, of CTR planning within this, uh, how CTR affected jurisdictions, CTR affected employers actually have a, a better uh, terms of mode share of using other modes like transit, walk, bike, and roll than uh, employers that are not CTR affected. So the effects of CTR are highlighted within this section. And then we call out these new um, kind of priorities to support TDM planning and continue that work in our within our region. I have them listed here as uh, bullets, and I will briefly cover uh, improving TDM integration and planning. And, and again, anticipation of the conference of plan updates that are going on right now, making sure that TDM is incorporated and integrated throughout your conference of plan, and not just the conference of plan, but the implementation plans, the different elements that are out there around transportation master plans or different modal plans uh, to make sure that we have it incorporated within our um, you know, implementation programs and, and uh, regulations. Uh, that's kind of the key to this TDM integration and planning. And we facilitated some discussion with our uh, stakeholders over the last few years about how that's occurring in places like Snohomish County and Bellevue. Uh, we also have uh, measuring program effectiveness and efficiency. In our um, inventory, we were uh, finding a lot of different uh, ways of, of uh, showing effectiveness and efficiency and trying to kind of like look at this a little bit more uh, fine grain, trying to encourage uh, programs to, uh, to develop really good quantifiable measures around how effective uh, TDM programs are in, in encouraging mode shift and achieving mode shift, and then trying to kind of get more consistency in that area. Evaluating and addressing equity in TDM, again, as part of our regional equity strategy, we're, we're trying to incorporate equity in everything we're doing and I think we'd found some uh, evidence in some of our past regional household travel surveys that uh, about where um, uh, programs such as uh, getting um, transit passes out to people were maybe not hitting all the uh, kind of the areas that uh, would be more equitable in terms of shift uh, workers or retail workers, maybe not re uh, receiving those benefits as much as, as maybe an, a more white collar office worker. So uh, again, trying to dig into that kind of information and trying to ensure that we are uh, centering equity in all we do, including TDM. And then modernizing the CTR law, again, kind of recognizing that uh, large employers at peak periods is, is a percentage of our trips. And when you even look at uh, uh, all trips in, in general, uh, I think it's about uh, employment trips just in general are about a quarter of our trips. So looking beyond employment even and trying to look at all the trips and trying to ensure that people have opportunities to uh, uh, look at mode shifts Outside of uh, outside of CTR and and even outside of employment in general. Um, now I'm going to transition a little bit to our what we're doing in terms of our next regional transportation plan. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we've launched this uh, with our board and earlier uh, this year in February of 2024. Uh, 2024 is going to be all about engagement and identification of plan priorities. I mentioned the six uh, priorities that were in the. Uh, uh, current plan. We'll be re-examining that and kind of looking out to what all is going to be in the scope of this plan. What will our priorities be? How will we uh, be engaging uh, kind of in the development of the plan 2025 and beyond? Uh, we've started off with engagement at our, at our board level, and we're going to be uh, going out to a more broader public outreach over the summer and into the fall to bring that information back to our board. We'll be including TDM and CTR planning within that outreach and engagement. And then in 2025 will really be our year about analysis and draft plan development. There's a lot of work that goes into that. We have a very uh, complex model and uh, we really uh, uh, takes a lot of information out of our regional household travel survey inventories we've updated. We uh, need to collect and update uh, transit networks and future transit networks from all the transit agencies within our region and uh, update all the elements of our financial strategy. So there's a lot of work that goes into that and developing a draft plan, which will then be released for the public uh, in, in the early part of um, 2026 with an adoption of May 2026 to ensure that we continue to receive uh, federal certification and federal funds flowing to our region. 
throughout this whole process, we're going to have that ongoing public outreach I mentioned a few slides ago. We'll have both the broader public outreach, particularly starting this summer, and, and including uh, a lot of different elements of targeted public outreach to populations that are difficult to reach, people with uh, special accessibility and mobility challenges. Uh, we'll be going very broad with our public outreach throughout the plan. And just to give a sense of what our board's been talking about so far, you can see here, this is a word cloud that was generated based upon some polling we did with the board earlier this year. Uh, I, I'll just point out that uh, safety, equity, and climate continue to be very large, uh, uh, writ large with them. Those are our key uh, policy focus areas that really cover cross cut throughout uh, and uh, all, the, all the work we do. But you also see transit and ferries, uh, bicycling, safety uh, around bicycling and things like that. Some really key elements here, particularly with respect to those that um, you don't see TDM listed, but TDM is uh, very important to uh, achieving mode shift to uh, the elements like transit and bicycling, walking, things like that. Um, we also kind of continued engaging with our board and uh, Again, safety, climate, and equity, and preservation and maintenance continue to be our priorities. Uh, we also heard um, in new work and innovations and, and kind of the work we're doing with around our uh, developing a regional safety action plan. We've applied for a regional climate uh, action plan as well. We anticipate receiving those funds and doing continuing work on that. Continuing our work on access to transit, as I mentioned earlier, that's very multimodal in our in everything we do and what's in our current plan and continuing to expect to be in the, the future plan. It includes everything from uh, transit-oriented development and where people live and making sure that's transit-oriented to uh, walk, bike, and roll, transit services, uh, pick up and drop off modes, and, and even uh, park and ride elements. So access to transit, very comprehensive and trying to up our game on that. Continuing to look at our financial strategy and looking at that uh, the feasible revenues and expenditures and taking a closer look at the user fees and, and the, uh, the uh, kind of... Uh, uh, elements of road usage, charge, tolling, and things like that. And then uh, I think a real key element that TDM uh, implementers will be really interested in is post-COVID travel behavior. Our uh, 2023 regional household travel survey, we think is going to be uh, really informative to us about how travel patterns have changed. We had a, a, a survey in 2019, I believe. We also did one during the midst of COVID in 2021. And now 2023, we think Travel has been, been kind of more normalized to the new normal, and uh, we'll be able to see how that's changed as people are coming out of the pandemic and helping to influence our travel models. And then addressing varying needs around the region. Uh, I think it will pause here. Part of what we're doing in this planning update to begin with is, is to update our inventories. And I mentioned earlier, we had a, an inventory for the current regional transportation plan. It was our first ever regional TDM inventory. I think we learned a, a lot out of that inventory and we're looking to learn even more out and kind of and update that information we have from the current inventory with this new one that went out in October. So it's been a quite a, quite a while that's been out there. We still have some outstanding um, uh, surveys. We'd love to hear from everybody if possible. And we've highlighted here, I think the um, White text and underline means a response is still needed. So if your jurisdiction's on here and it has a, a underline with white text, we would still love you to, um, to fill out that survey. Please reach out to Erin after this meeting and uh, she'll make sure you uh, have the link and you can uh, update it. Some of, we, uh, we try to get as close to 100%, but uh, we'll, um, we never quite get that. Uh, but it would be really great to be able to get the CTR affected jurisdictions in particular and uh, any others that are highlighted there. So. Uh, I think at this point, Aaron, I think I'm going to turn things over to you. Yep. Uh, thank you, Gil. And I did put the link in the chat. Um, folks can still reach out to me, but uh, for the inventory survey, if uh, that's helpful. Um, okay. So um, I think there we go. Okay. Um, so for this portion, we know uh, based on the poll at the beginning, uh, pretty much everyone here today is working on their local CTR plans and probably have questions for um, what PSRC's role is in that and how we can support that. So um, we will we will jump into that guidance. Uh, next slide, please, Gil. So for those who are newer to this process or maybe um, if there are, if anyone has joined that's not from a CTR affected jurisdiction, a little bit of background. Um, so the state law requires jurisdictions affected by the commute trip reduction law submit a four year plan. Um, for the last several years, there was an exemption in place that kind of put this process on pause. 
but per the TDM Technical Committee, the exemption was not renewed. And last year, WashDOT issued guidance. Um, the image here is the, the cover of that guidance, um, which is available on the TDM board's website. Um, and this was to sort of give some direction for the next cycle of CTR planning. So PSRC has reviewed this guidance document and we have been working with WashDOT to determine an approach that makes sense for our region to uh, meet these requirements, both in terms of um, reviewing the local plans as well as developing the regional plan, um, which we are required to submit given that all four counties in the PSRC region are CTR affected. Next slide, please. So state law requires that these plans are compatible with other transportation and land use plans. Um, and the WashDOT guidance tasks RTPOs, which is uh, what we are as PSRC, with reviewing those draft plans for consistency with the regional CTR plan. So as Gil mentioned um, in, in his portion of the presentation, um, our sort of most recent CTR plan of any kind is our current regional transportation plan um, that he was uh, sharing all of those ones that had the little logo in the corner there. Um, so we'll be looking to that for consistency as well as um, the groundwork and overall themes that have already been set for the next RTP. Um, so that's what we'll be looking at when we're determining uh, consistency. And I think that's it. Next slide. So um, also in uh, don't expect folks to <laughs> be able to read names uh, in that screenshot, but that's just demonstrating that's a list of all the CTR affected jurisdictions. All of those that are highlighted are the ones in our region. So we make up a, a big share of uh, the CTR program. Um, so a little more detail on what this review will entail and what it means for you as local implementers. We really wanna emphasize that this is a, a friendly review. We're not trying to um, catch anybody on a technicality or, or anything like that. We're just really reviewing uh, for consistency. And if there's anything major or glaring um, that is inconsistent with our overall plan for the region, which is again, really focused on um, that mode shift and um, looking at climate, safety, uh, equity, um, all of those things, um, it, that's what we'll be comparing against. Um, additionally, we will be using the content we review in your plans to inform our next regional plan. So really trying to make this an iterative process. Um, so we will conduct just a staff level review of the draft plans on a rolling basis. And I'll get a little more into the timeline on the next slide. Um, and then we'll communicate to each submitting jurisdiction confirmation that we've received it and reviewed it. And if there's any uh, feedback, we will provide that. Our thinking is that we'll keep this process organized, but not overly formal. So we'll probably just be sending that confirmation via email. However, we acknowledge that uh, the local plans need to go through a local adoption process. So if for your process, you need a formal letter that we've reviewed the plan for consistency, we can work with you to do that. And then uh, we will keep track of which plans we've reviewed um, and keep documentation of all of that as well um, in case WashDOT, the TDM Technical Committee or WashDOT have any questions about uh, plans we've reviewed or need confirmation um, that they were sent to us. Then finally, after uh, we complete the review, um, it's up to local jurisdictions to submit their plan to the TDM Technical Committee, um, which is sort of an interim step before um, the local adoption process. Um, and I will cover the deadline on the next slide. So I think you can advance, Gil. So um, not to stress anyone out by this uh, calendar, but um, we do want to give uh, some some guidance, uh, and we're really had some conversations with WashDOT as well as internally to try to figure out um, the timing that makes sense. So the WashDOT guidance said that the RTPO should come up with a deadline for local plans to be submitted for review, and what we're putting out is September twentieth of this year. Um, our goal in developing that timeline was to allow as much time as possible for folks to work on drafts. I know um, 
there's a lot of work ahead to accomplish that. Um, all of that said, we are reviewing these on a rolling basis. So if you have your draft plan ready and want us to look at it in June, um, that's fine. Submit it to us. We, we won't hold on to it until September 20th. Um, we'll review it as soon as we can. Again, that's kind of pending our other workload. But our goal is to really not, not slow anyone down um, and to make this as easy for all of you as possible. So for plans that are submitted um, on time by that September 20th deadline, we're committing to providing feedback by November 1st. Um, the thinking here is that we wanted to be uh, cautious just in case we get all 40 jurisdictions submitting plans to us on the 20th, um, how quickly we think we can get through all of them. Uh, again, that said, we will review them as they come in and we're not gonna wait until the first to give you feedback. So. Um, you know, my personal hope is that uh, we'll see these kind of roll in throughout uh, the summer and early fall and uh, can just be returning them back to you as soon as possible um, and really completing that review and, and helping you all stay on schedule. Um, and then just as a reminder at the bottom here, then um, the local jurisdiction, your plans are required to be submitted to the TDM Technical Committee by December 1st. So again, we tried to allow that month of November um, in case you want to make any final adjustments after our review. But I again want to underline that we're not we're not anticipating giving a, a ton of feedback or uh, little micro edits or, or anything like that. We're really just reviewing for consistency, but trying to build as much time into this schedule as possible. Um, just knowing that uh, it's it's been many years since we've all done this, and a lot of us are doing it for the first time. So. Um, really trying to be uh, as prepared as possible. Um, the last thing we wanted to cover on the timeline was that um, for folks that have reviewed that WASHDOT guidance I mentioned in the earlier slide, you'll see it recommends um, local plans be submitted both to your RTPO, which is us at PSRC for King, Pierce, Snohomish, and Kitsap counties, as well as uh, WASHDOT staff if you'd like feedback on that draft plan. Um, and we did confirm that that can be done concurrently. So if you want to um, get to a point where it's it's ready and you want to send it to both WASHDOT and us, that's fine. Um, or if you want them to look at it first and then us, that's also fine. Um, but just again, try. I think everybody's trying to be um, as flexible and accommodating as possible um, as we kind of embark on this new process. And I think that's it for the timeline. Uh, next slide, please, Gil. Um, so another thing we wanted to share with everybody today is um, we've developed uh, or we've compiled rather um, some resources to hopefully help all of you working on these local plans. Um, within that WASHDOT guidance, there was a list of recommended plans to consult when developing your CTR plan. So what we went ahead and did is compiled all of these in one place on our website. Um, and so that image on the left is a screenshot of what the web page looks like that's linked on the screen here. And, um, and we'll be posting this PowerPoint too. Um, so uh, you can actually click on that link. Um, and so each of those um, teal uh, headers is a, a drop down with all of the resources listed. So we've included um, regional plans, we have uh, state plans, transit plans, um, as well as links to where you can view comprehensive plans. Um, we don't have all of the current comprehensive plans listed on our website. And we're also acknowledging that many jurisdictions are in the process of uh, developing their comprehensive plan update. So we address that a little bit um, in the, on this web page as well. Um, so I think that's it for this slide also. Okay, next slide, Gil, thanks. Just trying not to leave anything out. Um, so just kind of in summary, um, we are the current RTP that Gil presented on earlier uh, it should provide the regional priorities to give you some guidance as you develop your local plans that is linked on our that resource page I just mentioned. Um, we will be doing a review for plan consistency um, of your local plans and the, we'll also be taking what we learn reading your local plans and feeding all of that into our next regional transportation plan which will meet the requirements and serve as our regional ctr plan so again attempting with this graphic to kind of demonstrate that this is really an iterative process um, and so 
uh, the same way that I, I know many of you are kind of catching uh, local jurisdictions uh, in the process of developing um, the comprehensive plan updates. So you're kind of in between the, the current or the old comp plan and the new one. Um, similarly, we are mid RTP update. So um, just wanna emphasize that uh, that's how we anticipate this process going. Um, and I think that's it, Gil. I think the next one is just our, yeah, concluding slide. Um, yeah, and I wonder and, if I should keep this up. Uh, uh, um, er, oops, Mike, can you hear me? Oh, thanks. Yes. Uh, Aaron, I think uh, Carol Thompson from WashDOT has uh, a couple of th comments here. And uh, Carol, I think uh, if you wouldn't mind, uh, maybe you could turn on your mic and uh, uh, screen uh, your video and and share the information you put in the Q&A. Uh, I think it'd be maybe potentially helpful unless you, yeah, I think that would be great. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Great, thank you. I just wanted to note that um, on the template that is in the guidance for local plans, cities and county plans, the last box in that template is um, reserved for regional review. So you can indicate in that box that the regional review has been done and what the, you know, what the termination is. Um, so okay. it's right there in the template if you care to use that. So that was one thing. And the other was um, the Don't deadline wait till, of, what? Don't wait till December 1st, right? <laughs> Yeah, we say December 1st, but it's really no later than December 1st. Um, we Earlier would be better. Um, the later you get your plan in, it's going to eat into your time that you have to get it reviewed and approved at your by your local jurisdiction. So um, we want to emphasize no later than December 1st. So it's not like your target, it's your drop dead date. If you can think of it that way, that makes and sense. And I think building on what you're saying, Carol, uh, I think what we've set up and Aaron, we kind of you shared that calendar. Our September 20th is a, a is a kind of our uh, drop dead for being able to get something in time for our November 1st. We're trying to kind of work things backwards, and the understanding that uh, with a regional review uh, to give you time to see what we have commented on, and then to be able to potentially make edits or changes. We wanted to give ourselves that time. But if you turn your uh, local CTR plan into us earlier. We would love that as well. So uh, we don't want them all on September 20th. So just building on what you said, Carol. Um, Thank you. And then um, I think at this point, maybe I'll just share our uh, screen for the agenda here uh, because I think I don't see other questions in, in the uh, Q&A. So um, uh, Aaron, this is maybe the time for us to transition to our, um, to our uh, more interactive part, but I'll share the agenda so people know what we're, what we have in 